Uh, now, what, what a lot of people probably don't know is that your office in its inception was what's famously known as the Hayes office when it, when it very first started out. Yeah, and that was a, basically uh, a government, center, government right, he, slash private sector censorship office. Right, and he became, he became notorious. What they probably also may not know, you are the first Jewish person to have the job, and there, there was a reason. I'm not the first Jewish person in my industry, but I am the first per <laughs> Jewish person in this well, job. Good right? point. Yes, yeah. but but that's 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 the that when the, when they started the organization, they specifically didn't want to have a Jew in the job because they it was their own insecurity. They were they were covering up, or not covering up, but they wanted to compensate because they felt that they were a <laughs> dominantly Jewish industry and that they should have this person fronting the, the ratings in the industry that wasn't. Well, I, I, you could also argue the first person when, who was involved in agriculture in this job. Well, you know, true. there are a lot of first <laughs> kinds of things. Uh, but, but first of all, you only had five or so people in this job. I mean, Jack had it for oh, it's a very short list. 35, 38 yeah. years. And then Hayes, who was the Postmaster General, had it for a period of time. Johnston, Eric Johnston. Right. There, have, there have been very few. Um, and the industry has much changed, too. Absolutely. You know, th this is no longer an industry dominated by, let's say, Samuel Goldwyn or Jack Warner or Lou exactly. Wasserman. I mean, this is an industry composed of multinational companies that movies and television are only parts of much larger companies. Right. So well, you it's got a different the job business for, now. You got the job for the vast amount of qualifications because it's, it's a completely different um, industry than it was when Jack Villani started doing the job. I think the big change is technology. Right. That, that in the last uh, 10 years, Jack, in fact, we talked about this, the complexity of an industry moving and changing so rapidly that you. the one positive thing is we can now reach everybody mm -hmm. with our product. Uh, you know, it used to be you had to physically go out and go to a movie to see it. Yeah. And then television came along. But now with modern technology, this is a great opportunity you, yeah. to, to reach people in rural areas, uh, uh, in areas that you can't communicate very well worldwide in the developing world. They can pick up a handheld device fairly inexpensively right. and watch anything and yeah. listen to anything. Yeah. So it's in one sense it's scary because it's no longer just the mm -hmm. big screen but on the other hand, it, it's a much more democratizing uh, uh, industry than it used to be. Did you restructure the way MPAA works? I mean, did you reshape it in your own image, sort of? I'd say it's an evolving process. Uh, I have Jack was uh, uh, a guy who was uh, uh, pretty much uh, ran the organization uh, centrally. It was, Jack. It was uh, autonomously. <laughs> it was I, I uh, uh, and uh, I'm not much delegation. I'm, I, 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 you know, he had good people working right, for him, but but he was he, he it was clear that he was in yeah. charge and that it emanated from the mm -hmm. top. I'd say I'm I've decentralized authority more than he did. Do, do you anticipate staying in the job as long as he was? Um, God, I'd love to live as long as he <laughs> did. You know, uh, I don't know. It's a yeah. it's a great job. It's a lot of fun. It's, it's a yeah. job that's easy to settle into and consider. I will have to career. tell you that it's when you work and imagine. You know. Uh, I see people in Washington all the time. I, I, I ran into somebody, and this is not to be negative, who's with the uh, American Chemistry Council or, or the Solid Waste Association. I'm thinking, <laughs> you know, just just imagine, I'm in a business that people like, that yeah, people I smile know. at, you know. And there's not, certainly nothing wrong with the American Shoe Association, but it's uh, not necessarily anything that's going to make you happy all the but, time. But your job at agriculture, pr probably less glamorous in a lot of ways, helped prepare you for just in the globalization of the market that you're dealing Although with. Although I have to tell you, and as Gus knows, the job in agriculture was also very good because... But not glamorous. Uh, you know, it, when you're in the <laughs> middle of... I never forget, when you talk about glamorous, I was, we were in Kenya together. And we took a trip down, and we had U.S. food. We were delivering U.S. food aid uh, to a group of Maasai uh, uh, warriors uh, about 100 miles south of Nairobi. And we drove these trucks in with food. And there must have been 5,000 people there on the side. And they, they came up, and they surrounded us. And it was like... It was like the people from heaven had come and brought the stuff. Oh my. That was pretty glamorous, actually. Well, you know, okay. so it's but there's different sides of that picture. As well, well, you walk down um, a, a red carpet in the same place or close to it with Angelina Jolie on your arm, and I would imagine. Well, I do think, think that, that it's a very good point you raise because people will come up to me and say, "You have the greatest job in the world," uh, yes. and then when you probe, it's usually because they think. Angelina Jolie and I are walking waiting someplace for you in the car outside. Right yeah, now. You know, and uh, th that that hasn't necessarily happened. But I've gotten to meet a lot of very interesting people. And what I found is most people in this business they come from backgrounds 
like mine or yours, and mm -hmm. they have the same emotions, and and it's it's not as exotic as you would think. They all look pretty good too, most of the time. <laughs> but 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 before we get to all those beautiful movie stars, I just wanted to go back to your to your last job for a moment to agriculture, because one of the issues you dealt with, and it's an important issue, was the, was was obesity and 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 the and the way food is getting to people and what they're inclined to eat and the habits of eating. Do you feel that we, because you took it on pretty strongly while you were at agriculture, so it's eight years later. Has, has anything been accomplished on this front? Uh, well, first of all, the awareness of eating patterns and food are as much greater than it used yeah. to be. The schools in this country have become much more, most school districts have become much more, have, but, but know, much more interested in, in, uh, in, you know, what is served and the nutritional quality of, I never forget it, and when I was in Congress and during the debates on the school lunch program, uh, uh, it was very hard to get low fat milk into the school lunch program because um, the fat content had to do with a lot with the profit associated mm -hmm. with, uh, with uh, non, the, the, the powder that was yeah. then served. Well, that's different now. You you really do see, I think, a much greater sensitivity to this issue, uh, particularly the issue of childhood obesity and, and, and hunger-related issues. Uh, and and um, uh, the medical community is starting to get more into it. I think we moved the issue along positively at USDA. We had the first hearings on diet, nutrition, and obesity. Um, and uh, uh, I... I, I, I you know, listen, we still have a society that's way overweight, childhood obesity, the rates yes. are going up very, very strongly. So we haven't focused as much as, as, as I think we should well, have. What, what you, this was uh, an interview you did back then, too, and you said that it relates a lot to extraneous issues like diet and exercise, television, computer watching. It relates to the nature of fast foods, people's lifestyles. People aren't eating as home as much as before. That, that will never change, will it? Uh, well, I mean, I'm, we're not going to probably go back to the era that... Right, uh, where set dinners at 6 and you, you know, sits down I mean, you table. have, there are certain basic principles you've learned. Like, for example, I go to a nutritionist. She says, when you eat, sit down. Don't stand up. Such you eat much point. more food standing up than you eat sitting down. Yeah. When you eat, uh, eat only what you put on your plate. Look at the size of your plate. You know, there are boundaries with food. If you have a buffets, you're going to eat unlimited. If you don't have buffets, you'll tend to eat less. I mean, all those kinds of things. I mean, a lot of these things you have to kind of learn on your own. Right. But I do think that the government has a role in reinforcing this, and particularly through the schools. That that's And for the first time, when Gus was here, we, we did a lot more to getting fresh fruits and vegetables in school lunch program, farmers markets programs, that kind of thing. And I think that's, that was very helpful. Um, um, I have encouraged, by the way, in my current business, where I can, the theater owners, to, to look at the food that's served in movie theaters. Yeah, just don't stop uh, the popcorn. Well, yeah, it's an interesting phenomenon. They did some experimentation with yeah. air pop popcorn in, in movie theaters. Yeah. They found it to uh, uh, be a, a very unacceptable uh, yeah, economic uh, right. way of going down the business. When people go to movies, they like to turn off the lights and enjoy themselves. I like the way the boxes of candy get bigger and bigger, but the amount of candy in size gets smaller and smaller. That's an interesting tactic. Uh, if you but say you, so. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, one last thing about food. Do you support the, uh, the I think it was Mayor Bloomberg in New York, uh, having cities or, or local governments or even state governments or federal government remove banned trans fats from the food supply? Um, you know, I, I don't want to necessarily get into something that I don't know as much about. I do know that trans fats are very bad for you. And, yeah, there's no uh, useful purpose they serve except know, to make a lot of Well, they, junk they, food. I mean, uh, we, we haven't yet come up with, I think, acceptable substitutes on the baking uh, on, a, on a very large scale operation. Yeah. But there's no question that this is harmful to you. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, uh, I, I know, I, 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 did they do it in New York? I don't, I know that got Yes, proposed. yes. You know, I mean, you know, as a general proposition, I'm, I'd, I'd like to see those issues dealt with without the government telling you Without what you can serve in restaurants, I, you yeah. know. Um, well, let's get let's get to the movies uh, because that it, it, we've just been to a very interesting time in the movie industry. And uh, to what extent were you? What was your role in the strike? Your organizations, if any. Uh, we had no formal role in the strike. There was an affiliate organization that represented all of the producing companies that employ me, mm -hmm. and they the, uh, the, uh, and that group. Did the negotiating, right? So it was separate from us. So uh, uh, we kind of kept people informed. We did our best to keep Congress and public policymakers informed about what the issues were. But I yeah. was not involved in the negotiations. But you were 